All right, we got a new video today, and I wanna talk about the negatives to becoming an instrumentation and control technician. I have, my channel is all about instrumentation, going to school, getting qualified, and getting the job. And today I wanna talk about some negatives, and this video is made for people who are just getting into instrumentation or thinking about doing it. I just wanna make sure you guys are aware of the risks and the potential problems with this career and I just want to be as upfront as I can. Personally, I really like instrumentation and controls. I find controls pretty exciting. It's a pretty fun job. I really enjoy troubleshooting equipment, learning about new machines and new technologies. And overall, personally, for me and my personality, I really love it. But here we go with the negatives. The first negative I got for you today is sometimes it's hard to get the first job. A lot of companies need instrumentation people. They need people who know a little bit about technology that can work on automated equipment. A lot of times this equipment comes from a contractor or from an outside company. They install it, they do a little training and they leave the equipment in you know, the factory at this company. And if they don't have people who are qualified to fix the machine, they gotta call the contractor and have them come out and fix it. So a lot of companies, a lot of industrial companies are looking for instrumentation people. They want someone on staff who can come out and figure out how to fix stuff like that. The problem is, is if you don't really know what you're doing, you can't really fix the machine. It takes a while to get good at your craft, to learn the tricks and, you know, become competent. So when you go to school and you try to get that first job, you might find it a little bit challenging. I've had one guy I talked to who had his associate's degree, had trouble landing that first full-time job. And he's the only person that really reached out to me with the associate's degree, but I know it did hit, take him a few months after school to find a job in his area. So it is possible that it'll be challenging to get the first job. Um, all I can say to that is when you're signing up for school, try to see if they can get you an internship or if they can place you with a company during school or after school. That's what I did. I started an internship in my second semester and I got a full-time instrumentation and electrical job before I graduated. So that was my route. Just be aware that landing your first job could be challenging. And I have a whole video about that. I will post a link at the end of the video and you can check it out. All right, before I get into point number two, I wanna let you guys know two things. First, I'm trying to get this channel monetized. I am getting there. I'm about a third of the way there on watch time hours, so I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Also, I'm developing an online store to sell some instrumentation and controls merchandise. Check it out. I will put a link in the description. My second negative is physical requirements of the job. Depending on where you work, the job can be very physical, especially if you're working in a manufacturing plant. If something breaks, you gotta run over there and figure it out right away. So just be aware that at certain companies, you're gonna be sweating throughout the day, maybe not the whole day, but you are gonna be expected to be physically active and it could be pretty hard on your body. There's uh, sometimes you have to do scale calibrations, which requires lifting weights, even going into control panels and you know, installing wires. If you're installing enough wires, it can be physically challenging to do that. Sometimes you have to crouch over. Sometimes you have to climb on a ladder. There are physical requirements to the job. It's by no means the um, most labor intensive industrial skilled trade. It's pretty low on the totem pole, I would say, but you can definitely expect to sweat at least sometimes as an instrumentation and electrical technician. All right, so the third negative of getting an associate's degree in engineering technology and becoming an instrumentation and control technician is the limitations of the associate's degree. Once you get that first job and get a little bit of experience, you're gonna find that it's, you know, the demand is pretty high and it's, uh, it's a skill that's very desired, but once you get into a company and become established, you're not gonna be able to you know, climb your way to the top because you have an associate's degree, um, you're pretty much just gonna plateau at the technician level, or it's possible that you'll branch off, you know, that you'll upgrade to the engineering level. But again, with the associate's degree, that's gonna like limit the possibilities and extent of your career. 
and a lot of people at some point are, go back and get that bachelor's degree so they can climb a little higher in their in their career you know get to that engineer level and then becoming an engineering manager you're not going to get to that manager of engineering level with the associate's degree so just keep, keep that in mind when you're signing up for your classes little mid video side note if you end up getting that associate's degree in engineering technology instrumentation automation anything like that you're gonna be in a position where you're gonna get to look work on very complex very high-tech machines and it is very cool it's just a wonderful experience going to school and getting into the field you'll be able to work on complex machines and you'll be able to support your family and it's a beautiful thing thanks for tuning in guys all right so my fourth and final negative for being an instrumentation and control electrician is that it's it can be a grimy job it's an industrial job it is not an office job and if you're doing that it's it's it can be mm, challenging it can be loud it can be dirty it is not an office job you, you know you're going to be out in the elements working under pressure so just keep that in the back of your mind if you're getting into instrumentation and controls and you want to get into industrial maintenance it is a industrial somewhat grimy job and you're going to get all the stuff that comes with that so just keep that in mind that's it that's all the negatives i can think of i personally think that instrumentation and controls and industrial maintenance is a very fun and rewarding career i love doing industrial maintenance so um i have a bunch of other videos on this topic check out my channel check them out thank you so much for watching the video if you're still watching at this point i really appreciate you and i will catch you next time thanks